So today I'd love to discuss um, artificial lighting and grow lights for your plants. I've only recently um, delved into this and I've had a lot of advice from friends and a lot of trawling of the internet. It can be quite overwhelming. So just bear with me today. It's going to be quite a long video. I'm very educational. Lots of numbers thrown at you. Lots of um, abbreviations thrown at you. Um, grab a pen and notepad. I'll try and make it as easy as possible. Cool, so let's get started. Um, let's talk about light in general. So a plant's natural um, source of light is from the sun. What the sun does is it um, produces different colored wavelengths that your plant uses to produce, um, through photosynthesis, foods like starches and stuff. Okay, so a little bit of grade 12 biology coming back. Um, so that's why light is probably one of the most important things for your plants. Now, a grow light or artificial lighting is a light that replicates the spectrum of the sun um, to a certain degree. And um, you get a wide variety of different lights that can do this. I used to think that, you know, there were just two kinds of light. Um, a normal light bulb and an energy saving light bulb but it gets it's a lot more complicated than that so I'm going to run through the four different kinds of technology and lights that one gets the first two are lights um, technologies that you probably won't be using for your normal um, setup and and just for normal growing of your foliage plants um, so the first one that I'd like to discuss is incandescent lighting now this is the old school lighting, Thomas Edison and Swan lighting, with, you know, you see the little light bulb pop up above someone's head with a little tss, tss, metallic thing in the middle. That's incandescent lighting. Now the reason why you wouldn't use this is because um, it takes up a lot, a lot of energy to produce the amount of light that your plants would need. And it also gets very hot, um, so it just isn't environmentally friendly. Um, and I don't even know if you would have the right fi uh, fi fixtures to, to have such a large light bulb. Um, and so let's completely ignore that one, okay? Incandescent, big no-no. Okay, and the second um, technology that you probably won't be using is something called HID or um, HPS lamps. These are high intensity discharge lamps or high pressure sodium lamps. Um, these are used by large-scale growers and take huge, huge costs and effort to set up. So stay clear of that um, for your normal lighting options. And the two technologies that you will use is, um, the first one is called uh, fluorescent lights. And these are um, the typical lights that you see in offices, you know, the long tubes um, that sort of flicker every now and again. Um, these you will be using um, either in the tube form you get different different strengths so either in the tube form or in something called a compact fluorescent lamp which is shortened for CFL remember that abbreviation very important CFL and these look more like your ordinary bulbs and these are the ones that have taken over the market in recent years um, being labeled and called um, energy saving lamps um, so these are slightly, fluorescent is slightly your, your more expensive option to go for grow lights, but it's definitely an option for you. The second option that you probably might look into is something called LED lights. Okay, we've all heard that abbreviation before. And LED lights, because they can separate different wavelengths and different colors, you'll either get a white color with the whole spectrum of light for your plants, or you'll get a mixture of a blue and red light. Those are the most important colors for your plant. Um, and so that's why you usually see some purple grow lights. They're using LED technology for that. Okay, cool. So now we know you'll either use a CFL or a LED light. Next, let's talk about what specs you'll be looking at on those two um, technologies. The first thing we need to talk about is wattage. Okay, so what, again, you kind of have a, a probably a, um, a small idea of what that is. 
it's the energy used for um, producing light. Now, those were really that's a really important measure for influorescent uh, incandescent light bulbs, but we're not using incandescent bulbs in this sense. So let's put the wattage one side, and we we won't really care about that, okay? Because the wattage used for CFLs and LEDs, um, or fluorescent in LEDs, is a lot more um, environmentally friendly. So the wattage will be a lot lower, even though the output and the equivalent wattage is a lot higher. So the two specs that you're going to be concentrating on is Kelvin and Lumen. A Kelvin is the color temperature or the color of the light. So you've got a spectrum of from warm, warm light, and that's sort of the yellowy light, to cold light, which is sort of the bluey light. Now you kind of want to be right in the middle of the spectrum. If you go too low to the warm light, you won't have enough blue light for your plant. If you go too high on the spectrum, you won't have enough red light for your plant. Remember, red and blue are important for your plants. Um, so you kind of want in the middle. I think it's between three and 5,000 Kelvin. Um, so that's an important um, spec to remember is Kelvin. The next spec to remember is lumen. Now lumen is how bright the light is, right? So you can get a very um, low light or a very bright light. Um, and this is important. This is almost the, the quantity of light your plant will be receiving. The closer the lamp is, the higher the lumen. The further away the lamp is, the lower the lumen. Um, so if you think about it, Kelvin is almost the quality of light and lumen is almost the quantity of light. So you want to be looking at those two specs. Lumen, you'll be looking between, I think it's, um, what did you see again? What did I say? Okay, lumen is between about 300 and, eight, 300 and 800 lumen you want to be looking at. Cool, so now we know what technology we're going to be using. Now we know what specs we're going to be looking for. Let me show you what I bought. I'm still experimenting, so I'll keep you updated. Um, it's, it's a little bit complicated on what works best for you because you have to take into consideration what your natural light setup is. So what additional light are you bringing to the party? Um, okay, so the first thing that I got was a LED... Um, lamp bulb um, and this guy is um, white light it says here warm white and it says 2700 Kelvin which is how warm it is or how what the color is and remember I said we're going to be looking between um, I think it was about three and five so this misses that spec just a little bit but it's by 300 so it's not an issue if it's close to your plants it will probably give it a low light additional quality um, then so that's the Kelvin if we look here ah, there's the lumen so that's how bright it is see there's the lumen um, so that's how bright it is and that's 1521 lumens which is so lovely because remember 800 lumen is probably is what I said would probably the, be the max that you would use but this, this is perfect. I mean, anything above 800 is a great light. You've just got to be careful because if the lumen is too high, remember, it's almost like full sun. Um, so you've got to bring that back down again. But lumens can get quite high. Um, then another thing to look at. So here it says the wattage. It says 15 watt to 100 watt. Okay. It's probably what it means here is it pro it's probably um, it uses 15 watt but the brightness is the equivalent of about 100 watt in comparison to an incandescent bulb. So don't look at the wattage because you don't care about incandescent bulbs, right? Um, the other thing, important thing to look at is the fitting. This says it's an E27 or ES fitting. Now that's important because that's the kind of fixture you're gonna be needing. That's the little thing that you put it onto on your lamp, um, on your lamp stand or your lamp, um, sitting lamp whatever um so that's important now i made the mistake with that when i bought my cfl remember cfl is your fluorescent okay first of all this is a huge bulb let me show you what it looks like so a friend of mine um actually sent me a link to a website i'll put it in the description below so you can follow it too 
um, to look for CFL um, light bulbs. And it was smaller ones that had the right fitting, that had the right specs, um, but they weren't in stock. I was, I get really impatient. So I was like, I'm not waiting. I'm going for the one upper, the one that's a little bit brighter. And I didn't realize how big it was, guys. Okay, this is huge. Two issues with this with this light bulb because it's so huge. And I only realized it once the order had arrived. And I was like, oh my goodness, what do I do? The one thing is that the fitting is not um, suitable for your standard light fittings but you can buy a um adapter which you put on and then it goes onto your onto your light fitting so that's what i've done so it's not gone to waste the second thing is you can't really put a lampshade over it because this sticks out i haven't yet found a lampshade that is big enough but also i've decided not to use lampshades so that as much light as possible goes out to the plants the moment you have a lampshade the light is directed below Unless you want to direct it to a specific direction, then sure, go for that. Okay, so that's a CFL, and this is an LED. Then I went one step further. I was like, I'm going all out. I'm investing in this. I'm going to experiment. And the next thing that I went for is a floodlight. Now, this is also LED technology. Okay. Um, it's a little floodlight, and you set it up. It's got a little stand and everything. Now, floodlights are awesome. The only, the only problem with them is that um, they're not very efficient for light because the light gets scattered. Okay, it's not like a bulb that is sort of direct and can be directed. Floodlights are, get quite scattered. Um, so the quantity of light that your plant is going to be receiving or the um, lumen of the light that your plant will be receiving is less. The other thing that you have to... I'll also put up a post about a little link where you, where you can get this. Um, the other thing about these floodlights is you've got, to, uh, you've got to be a little bit advanced to put your own plug on. I'll probably be doing that and doing a little tutorial on how to do that. I'm becoming an electrician. <laughs> um, so these are quite cool. Because it's LED, you can also get... Um, You can also get, this is specifically, this is a larger one. This is specifically, you can see on the, on the box, it's specifically red and blue light, right? So that's going to shine purple um, on my plants. Right, so probably the cheapest option of the many options I, I've shown you was probably the LED um, lamp. It's slightly lower in the Kelvin that I wanted, but it is higher in the lumen that I wanted. Um, I bought this at Builders Warehouse. They've got lots of options of these. So I would probably recommend this the most. Um, however, I am having quite a lot of success with um, the CFL. And I will post probably some videos on, 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 on how they're doing. So to summarize, um, you're looking at LED. You're looking at fluorescent lights. Um, Preferably CFL lights, compact fluorescent lights, preferably um, LED lights. LED, you can get blue and purple um, specific lights, or you can get a white light with a full spectrum. Um, CFL lights just come in white. Um, Kelvin and Lumen are important. Um, there are specific specs of them that are important to aim for, for your plant's needs. And guides, guys, you might not know your plant's needs right away, but that's why it's important to experiment. You know, put your lamp closer. If you see your leaves start to brown, they are getting too much light, um, they are burning, they're getting a bit of light damage, move the light bulb further away, or get a light bulb that has got a lower lumen. Um, if they're not growing well, or their growth is stunted, you might need to get a better spectrum of color, so then you would look at, at getting a different Kelvin. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. If you have any additional information, pop them in the comments below. I'm always keen to learn more. This is a very recent journey for me. Um, and I'm excited to keep you guys updated. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.